Hello racing fans and a warm welcome to our Gallup TV preview show. When's it for? Well, it's for Friday. It's the 19th of April where we race at Cabeca and we're racing on the turf track. And what's on the betting menu? Well, it's eight races carded. Uh, so the exotics will all begin in race number one. I trust that you're well. You're having a fair week. Hopefully we can start the weekend off with a bang. And as always, we welcome our expert in Cabeca, none other than Grant Paddock. Grant, uh, you're just telling me off here you've been uh, a busy man uh, this week. Yeah, Dees, they roped me. First of all, morning Dees and morning punters. Yeah, they roped me and I'm doing a bit of bit of work down at the track. And um, for a couple of days, you know, the sale's on. So they're up at the sales trying to get some owners and some, some horses. And uh, yeah, we're doing a bit of work for a change. Well, let's get straight into it, Grant. And uh, race number one will begin at 12.35, 25 to 1. It is the start of the bar pot with uh, the eight races discarded. Just as a guide, Grant, uh, as always, uh, fixed odds betting market. Number one is at 4 to 1. Horse number four in the red, 6 to 10. Number five, a first timer at 8 to 1. And horse number six at 5 to 1. Uh, are we all in here with the, this horse in the red for the buy pot? 100% D's all in, best bet on the card, Project Runway, um, very, very good first run, only Green has uh, beat it, uh, I don't think this is a very uh, strong field to respect to all the other runners, but I think this horse will win and win very comfortably, it's the start of the bipod, the banker in the bipod, and probably a, a horse that will go into a lot of multiples. Well, and just try and give us a straight line exact if you can there, Grant. Uh, it's one from, uh, th sorry, uh, it is four from one. Four from one. Four from one. If you don't want to take uh, the odds on about number four, maybe try that exact at Brown Paddock going four to beat one. Place accumulator begins at 13, 10, 10 past one, 1,200 meters the distance. It is a maiden plate for Phillies and Mares. This is how they're betting. Number one at seven to one. Horse number two at 33 to 20. Uh, number three at 11 to two. Horse number six at seven to one. Number seven at six to one. And uh, that is it, Grant. It's double figures, the balance. I'm just having a look at a few of the runners here. Number one, debuting in the province. Number two, also debuting in the province. So the question will be, will their cave form be good enough to see them make winning debuts? Because they are priced up in the betting. Um, Dees, normally this Cape Town form is way too strong for Port Elizabeth Maidens. You know, it's been proven over the last couple of weeks with uh, these Cape Town horses coming here. And they don't just win, they win comfortably. So, uh, listen to the ocean, has got to be the first choice there uh, of the local horses that have run already. Gotcha Buzz is holding solid form and he's got to be competitive. Looks like he's going to win a race soon. And then by the lights and the moon and, and winning grace will probably chase them home in the, in the trifectas and quartets. You know, both those horses have had multiple chances. I know by the light of the moon is got breathing issues so um you know that's probably restricting it and winning graces yeah you know, she's been there and there about holding decent form with regards to the one fanny campbell i haven't heard much about those but her, her cape town form should should um uh give her a decent chance here so you probably got to watch the betting on that one these but um listen to the ocean for me uh, to, uh my bypass i think i went two three six and seven that is a, a, a tricky start a uh, tricky second leg of the bypass but uh, that cape town form is normally strong enough these so Grant Paddock playing it wide here, two, three, six, and seven. He suggested for race number two in the start of the bar pot. Uh, sorry, the place accumulator. So uh, he is playing wide there, and maybe he could double up in his bar pot, and maybe even treble up in his PA. That will be a bonus. Race number three, the start of the big one. Grant thirteen forty-five, twin uh, quarter to two, twelve hundred meters the distance. It's an open maiden. Uh, let's have a look at the betting here. Number one is at two to one. Then we got number four at eleven to two, five at eight to one, horse number seven at eight to one, eight at twelve to one, nine is a five to one shot, ten is at eleven to two, and then it is double figures the balance. Yeah, I, I tried to make uh, you know some sense out of this uh, pricing up of number one, and uh, I hear you about the Cape form, but this all started uh, his racing in, in KZN, and then Peter Musket, obviously, you know, when he took that string down to Cape Town, uh, he decided to take this horse down, but it was no show in both those runs there. Poor runs. Number yeah, one. Yeah, I know. These are a little bit. I haven't heard much down here. I'll be very honest with you. Sixty-one kilos. 
Alan likes to start them in a, in, a, in a sprint race and then get them going into the distance. That suits them, 14 mile. I haven't heard much, but um, I'm, I'm willing to, to look past this one. These are, I've got big respect for this horse, um, War Sword from the Duncan McKenzie yard. When, when William Cotra jumps on the, the Duncan McKenzie horse, you've got to prick your ears and uh, there's normally something's going to be happening there. So, uh, I mean, in the camp of War Sword in this race, actually, these and then Run for me, he'll be there and thereabouts. I see they brought him back in trip. They tried him over a touch further and it didn't seem to suit. Um, and then this, uh, from the Kelly Mystery Yard, this was the Kilo Gold. You know, he's, he just needs to learn to race the right way. I think he's doing it a little bit too hard in front and then packing it up. Uh, if he settles and gets a bit of cover, I think he's going to be a bit of a runner. I did make him my value bet on the day. So my pie pots, I went four, five, and ten. Tricky start to the pick six. You're probably going to have to add in the Richard for rehorse. And, um, uh, this horse captain efficient as well. Well, you gave us two nice horses there. You, you spoke highly about number five, War Sword, that's at eight to one. And you like number 10, Aquila Gold, that's at 11 to two. Those could be two very good inclusions. And if those horses have to arrive in the exotics, you're certain to drop tickets there in race number three. Race number four, 1600 meters, it's jackpot one. It's a classified stakes where number one is at six to one. Horse number two is at seven to two. Number three at four to one, number four at five to one, and horse number five at seven to one. Uh, number eight is at six to one, and it is double figures, the balance. What are we doing here in race number four, which is jackpot one, Grant? Uh, these, I don't, this is a tricky kind of a race, this, eh? I, 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 I see the, the, the horse number two, he knows his favourite. Uh, he's one of those that came with Cape Town form one by six and a half or seven lengths and got an astronomical rating. They have battled since the others that have won and then run out in, in the bottom divisions. So um, he's probably got it all to do for me. I like the horse a lot. It's pride. I think he's in the right kind of a field back down into a classified. It's a five-time winner. Goes well on both surfaces. Um, I really do think he's a runner. And um, whilst I've been down here at the stables, I, I did hear a little bit for this horse, Pedro. He wasn't in my bike, but so uh, we're going to have to add him in, the, the, the five horse, Pedro. But 1-3, um, launch code's got a decent chance as well. 1-3, 8 and 5 is probably where we're going to have to be. Head Gardner, the, the Muzi Yeni ride, I think he's a better horse on the poly -Ds, but you never know that he's now joined the, the Smith Yard. Maybe he's turned the corner and, and goes on both surfaces. But I still think a lot of those pride is the, is, the, is the right horse in the race drop down to a, a classified state, classified stakes and being a five-time winner. Just one question for you, number nine. Um, what did you make of Jock Stratum's, uh, you know, runner first up in the province? I'm sure that was, there's a lot to build on there. Um, these, yes, they, they, they did fancy it. I must be honest, it was a bit of money around for it first time out. And, um, Probably needed a run. You know, this will be at second run, and I, I normally brass him on that second run. Uh, so let's have a look at her when, when, when she gets to go in uh, her third run. Okay, we'll just keep an eye on number nine, legal chit chat. But Grant has his ear firmly to the ground on uh, racing in Cabeja, and there is some talk for number five, Pedro. So take note of that for your exotics. Race number five, it's a Phillies and Mayor 66 handicap. What's the distance? 1200 meters. Let's have a look at the betting when we bring up the field. Number one is at seven to two. Horse number seven is at 28 to 10. Number 11 is at 9 to 2. And uh, number 13 is at 4 to 1. Uh, just uh, those runners in single figures here, Grant. I don't know if you're expecting a form result and you're going with the betting or you think something in double figures could pop up. Um, D, I don't think any, uh, anything can win besides one of those four horses. I'm very strong in the camp of number seven, the Lady Love with Richard Perea. I thought it was a very, very good run last time out against the boys over a five furlong, ran on very strongly, ran second to a uh, horse called Ferrando, which I think is going to be a very big runner in the last race. So I'm very strong on the Lady Love. I think 28 to 10 is a very decent price. And uh, I've gone with it, uh, seven from 13, one and 11. But uh, I, I really do like the looks of this, uh, the Lady Love, the seven horse. Well, I think after this show, when Grant Paddock talks, they usually shorten. So number seven, the lady love at the top of the boards at 28 to 10. Grant Paddock likes that, but his cover horses will be numbers one and 13. For race number six, his last chance to play a pick three. It's over 1,200 meters. It's for fillies and mares. And uh, this is a race where 
Uh, we're going to have a look at the best weighted column, Grant, but let me give you the betting first. Number one at 13 to 10. Number two at 33 to 10. Horse number three at five to one. Five is a six to one shot. And then it's double figures, the balance. Yep, Pinnacle Stakes Grant. We refer to the best weighted column. See how the weights uh, favor certain horses. Number one, three rocks is a 101. Then we go to number two at 97, three at 95, four at 93, and five at 92. So what's it? Uh, four pounds, two kgs, best, better off than uh, the second best weighted in uh, the field. And that's number one, three rocks. Daughter of Heavenly Blue. Well, you know, she is a, a smashing uh, filly. I just want you to give me your opinion on her runs in Cape Town, Grant. You know, they thought that she was good enough to go there. The one run she flopped, but uh, nevertheless, you know, that, that first time when she traveled down, she ran a really good race behind Quintus Light. So it was worth a try, wasn't it? Yeah, it was definitely worth a try. Well done for Alan for trying for it as well. This is a lovely filly, you know. She's she's really, she hasn't got the best of legs. These, I must be very honest with you. She's pretty crooked, but how she can run. And um, she's shown it, yeah, she's beaten the best fillies here. Um, she's waited to win. She should win. Um, I don't think she should have any problems in disposing of this field. She can run pretty much anyway from off the pace, from up there. Um, the danger is probably Gimme's Lashies, but, she, you know, she, there's, there's this other horse that's beaten them multiple times. Golden Pacific. Passchendaele's the horse that's on the up. She'll, she'll run a decent race, probably two, three lengths off uh, three rocks. But yeah, three rocks, definitely. She's the banker in the bipod to close the bipod up. These and uh, probably another horse into those multiples. Yeah, she's two from two over the course in distance grants and off her six wins to date, those have been the two wins over 1,200 meters. The balance have all been over 1,000. Grant likes a lot. Are we all in here? Banker and everything? 100% deep bank in orbit. Well, that is it. Number one, three rocks. We like to get the confidence from Grant, and when he's usually, you know, that confident, they arrive. Race number seven, penultimate race, East Coast Nursery. It's a listed race over 1,200 meters, and I'm not going to do the betting yet, Grant, because there's been a very important scratching of number three, Golden Rule. Uh, so the betting is all going to be adjusted, and I'm sure you are also going to have to do a rethink with your selections. Uh, but do you have any word on why number three is, has been scratched, Golden Rule? Um, Dears, yeah, he's under veterinary treatment. Um, he's definitely come out and um, hopefully all goes well with him. He's definitely not going to be taking his place there. But um, all good, all good. Um, difficult race this now, Dees. Um, I, I really like this horse, uh, number one, family law. Uh, he's got big issues at the pens, and uh, I see they've got the compression mask on at work last week with a horse that was difficult. I, I definitely think he's um, one of the leading lights in this race, and uh, for me, if he goes in, he's going to win. Uh, Splice the main brace, the nine horse, she's done nothing wrong, uh, but on time, she's well held by the likes of Family Law and Sylvonium as well. That's probably going to be my second choice, will be Sylvonium. But... Um, he throws it wide open now, you know, with, with a scratching of the favourite. He was a very, very smart horse. So, um, it, um, I'm going with Family Law to win a D's from Splice the Main Brace, Sylvonian, and uh, this horse Play Act from the Cliffy Miller Yard. Um, he's a nice horse here. I think he's a progressive kind of a horse there as well. And uh, he can run a big race in a race like this. It's, but it has really thrown this race wide open. Uh, you know, just your opinion uh, from your training days, etc., at this stage of their careers, uh, what are we now? We're over six months into the season, Grant. In fact, we just got three and a half months left of the season. But these three-year-old, uh, these two-year-old fillies, uh, you know, we know they get their weight for age allowance against the two-year-old Colts. Uh, it starts, uh, you know, leveling up now. I think at the beginning of the season, you, you'd favor the fillies uh, with that sex allowance. But it starts leveling itself out now towards the end of the season, doesn't it? Uh, 100% these have already leveled itself out. Um, the Colts have definitely caught up now. Those are those precocious ones, those precocious fillies, they do have that early advantage, but um, it's, leveled, it's leveled out now, there's no doubt. Okay, Grant uh, is uh, giving you his number there uh, for race number seven, and uh, that's the penultimate race on the card, and it could be a, a nice race, even though we have the unfortunate scratching of number three at the time of recording. Let's see who is the winner of the East Cape Nursery, a listed race over 1,200 meters. 
Then we close things off in race number eight, Grant. And this is where we really need your help on a weekly basis because it could be the get out stakes for most of us. It's the merit rated 74 handicap. The distance is 1,000 meters. And uh, this is the way they're betting. Well, I very seldom see a horse at a short price in the last race when we race in Cabeja. Number three is at six to one. Seven is at 11 to two. Eight is at 33 to 10. Then we got number 14 at 33 to 10 and 15 at 8 to 1. What are we doing? What are you suggesting? How are we going to end things off in race number 8? Do you have some bet for us? Yeah, these first of all, let me go through the race. I'll tell you what I like and I don't like. Um, I'm very strong on this horse, Ferrando. I thought he won a very, very good race last time out um, with the blinkers back on over the five furlong. I think he's a definitely a horse that can go back to back. I had a look at him just now in his box and he looks absolutely superb. He really looks ready to rock and roll. And um, I think he's a very big runner. Um, the dangers to him, this horse, great melody with Yeni on five furlong specialist. That's definitely going to be there and thereabouts, there's no doubt. Uh, and then uh, the new horse with the Cape Town form, Mars Vigilante, I think they would have preferred this over 1,200. He's really got some decent 1,200-meter form. They might go a little bit too quick for him here over the five. But with Richard on, he's definitely going to be finishing off the race. And then a little bit of a spook for the quartet. This horse number 11, Seattle Ripper. Uh, he's definitely on the up. He ran a very good race in a merit rate at 82 last time out, only getting beaten two lengths. He's a lovely kind of quartet horse. And it's a definitely a quartet race, D. So we're going to have to structure something here that the punters can uh, go out with uh, the bang with. And uh, I'm going with two roving bankers, Ferrando and um, this horse, um, Great Melody. And we're going to add in the following horses, the three, Pompeii Warning, the, the seven, Captain TikTok, the 11, Seattle Ripper, and the 14, Masked Vigilante. So eight and six roving by three, seven, 11, and 14, Grant? That is 100% these. Well, I'm going to give you one because I rem you remember I liked Iron Tail when we last spoke, huh? That's 100%. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if they were going to run it. They ran it and they won a very good race. So you probably know a little bit more than me, these. No, no, no. I just said, <laughs> I just had to throw that in. So I'm, I'm going to throw my, my number five in here uh, with your runners, okay? Uh, a glass shoes. That's the runner I'm going to include. So eight and six roving. I suggested a quartet. Uh, you can add numbers because I think Grant's really spot on when it comes to his roving bank because he had everything uh, that day. And uh, and I suggested, you know, I, and that was a really good quartet. But num nevertheless, uh, six and eight roving by numbers three, seven, 11, 14, and five. That is going to be how we end th things off in the last race and hopefully we can get a good quartet and i'll tell you what you are going to get a good uh, payout here because although number six fernando is at 33 to 10 uh no sorry number eight fernando is at 33 to 10 number six grant uh is in double figures so this will be a good quartet if that has to arrive that's how we close things off in race number eight but let's hand over to grant he's going to give us his suggested bet and what uh he thinks is the best and value bet on the card over to you grant your slide is up Thank you very much, Dees. Bet bets on the day. Race one, number four, Project Runway. My value bet, race three, number 10, Aquila Gold. And my suggested bets, the bipod goes as follows. We're going to open up with a banker, number four, in the first leg by two, three, six, and seven, by four, five, and 10, by one, three, and eight, by one, seven, and 13, by banker one for 108 grand. Okay, four times three is 12, 12 times three is 36, 36 times three is 108. That is the full cost of the perm. But as you know, when you play on the tote, you can play whatever amount you want. And the tote does the calculation for you with regards to your spend. So although it is a full bet for 108, you can do it for any amount that you want. And you can double up in these exotics. The bar pot, you can double up twice. So where Grant has four runners, if you get two of those, that means your dividend at the end will now multiply itself out by two. That's how it works. That's how the exotics work. Grant, thank you for your valuable time. We really appreciate it on a weekly basis. Thank you very much, Dees, and good luck to those punters tomorrow. Goodbye. Yeah. Thanks to Grant Paddock, thanks to the Gallup TV team, and to you, the valued racing fan. Thank you for your invaluable support of the tote.
And from myself, Dee's done and you have a blast. Find all the winners and hopefully it turns out to be a very successful day for you on this Friday. What's the date? It's the 19th of April at Kabeha where we race on the turf track. Until we meet again, you take care. Salaniga Shleh.